This is Indonesia, Australia's near neighbour, yet with many parts that feel as remote as anywhere on earth. This nation of over 17,000 islands, a melting pot of 1,300 distinct ethnic groups and cultures, is where we plan to explore. Transportation methods can be limited in these far-flung places, but we have our dream time. Not only our means of travel, but also our floating home. We invite you to sail along with us on our 41-year-old catch as we set out on an adventure of a lifetime. Welcome to Season 4, Dreamtime in Indonesia. After a wonderful few days at a fantastic anchorage on Palau Manaipa, we had come to Namlia on Buru to organise essential paperwork with Raymond, the Sail to Indonesia rally organiser, get fresh provisions and fuel, then join with a number of other rally members heading around the top of Buru to an anchorage on the west coast where we had all set off for our 200 mile passage west to Wakatobi. Unfortunately, when it was time to leave, our engine wouldn't start. Now, 24 hours and a new battery later, it's time to get underway to catch up with the fleet. I'm so very pleased that this swell doesn't wrap around into the anchorage. I'm just trying to work out why it doesn't, but there's quite a reef bank that protects the anchorage. We had to weave our way out. We're just having a very lazy motor sail up the northeast coast of Buru. We rolled the jenny out about 10 minutes ago. We had eight knots of wind just forward of the beam at the time. And of course, as soon as we made the decision to roll it out, the wind's just eased back to about three or four knots now. Just enough to keep the sail filled. We left at 6.30 this morning, 36 miles up to uh, our anchorage. So probably about six hours. Uh, we got a report from Emma on Lola B, who stayed in this anchorage uh, last night, that they did get a little bit of roll in there. We're going to see how we go. Uh, the plan B is further along. If we're making good enough speed, not running in the current or whatever, we might push on. It had put us there at around the five o'clock mark, so it doesn't leave us a lot of wriggle room regarding daylight, but it would be certainly a far more protected anchorage and then just a reasonably short hop round to Tomahu, where we're going to spend a few days. So, like always on our dream time, it's a case of let's see how we go and uh, make the decisions on the run as, as circumstances change. And there's our crew absolutely engrossed in the uh, day's events. Well, maybe not the day's events on board so far. Next minute, what happened to the wind? It's deserted us already. We've just discovered a totally new uh, fishing method to us. The uh, local in the blue boat out there in the distance, he's just cut, cut across our stern and he's actually towing a kite. And from the kite, he's got a line that goes down to the water with a lure. And he's manipulating that so the lure dances in and out of the water like a sailfish. What an ingenious way to go and try and catch a fish. Seeing as we no longer have a kite on board, because we gave it away to some kids, I guess we're placing all our faith in our good, good old uh, Spiro rig, our Paravane dive board that's out there, and it's taken our uh, small spoon lure down to about three, four metres, and we just cross fingers that we can pick up something uh, on our way around to the next anchorage. This is our last ditch hope, actually, just about, because we're using the last of our line. We've been stripped of a couple. You never really know what you're going to get up here. We had a forecast of uh, southeast this morning and then basically fading away to nothing. While well, we had almost no southeast and plenty of nothing, and now we've actually got eight to ten knots of uh, not enough to really give us too much speed along the coast. So we are motor sailing with the Jenny out. It's giving us a nice result. We're getting along at six and a half, seven knots. So we are now planning to uh, go to our Plan B anchorage and go further along the uh, Baru coast and shorten our trip tomorrow. And Karen's devouring another book. More the better, it'll lighten the boat. <laughs> I 
It has been one of those days. We started the engine at 6.30 and it hasn't been turned off and it's now almost uh, four o'clock. Uh, we've got another 5.8 miles to go. The wind has been all over the place. It is now blowing about eight knots directly on the bow. Um, we got local info that that would happen each afternoon. We'd get a westerly wind because all of the weather models actually show it as still being like two knots of southeast. Now we've got a bit of cloud. We even had a sprinkle of rain, just a sprinkle. It all comes down to we just want to get in, get anchored up, hopefully without any roll, get a good night's sleep and jump the 20 miles tomorrow around to Tomahu, where we're uh, heading for a few days. But not much sailing today. We had the sail out, just motor sailing. The rest of it's been the engine doing all of the work. Boring. Yes, quite boring, but that's what happens, particularly in Indonesia quite often. And we are on the lee side of the island. Um, so yeah, we're in, a, we're in a wind shadow. Boring. 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 We could be at work. 5.37 p.m. The sun is still in the sky, fortunately. We are 1.8 miles away from where we hope we're going to anchor because we sailed past a, uh, a workable anchorage at about midday and said, yeah, we'll push further west. And then the next one wasn't looking quite so well. So now we're going into all the indications from the satellite imagery is that it should be quite good. But the uh, fact of the matter is, is we're pushing the light a little bit. We've got light until about 6.30, but it's very low, so we're not seeing into the water too well. So we're going to have to rely on that satellite imagery, and we can see exactly where on that satellite image the boat is. Um, so we'll just steer it into the what we believe is a sandy spot with some anchorable depth and anchor up there for the night. But the problem is if that doesn't work, well, we don't have a plan Z then. <laughs> because Tomahu, where we're going to tomorrow, um, is an island anchorage, well guarded. There's two channels in there where you weave through coral. So it's not as if we could just duck around there 20 miles further and anchor in the, in the dark. No, we couldn't. But we are 99% confident that we'll be okay in this anchorage down here. You can't rely on the charts because um, we buy our track on Navionics. We've actually just gone straight across the beach and we're currently running along the beach on the land side of the beach. But you get that. It's all part of the fun of exploring Indonesia. The anchor is going 40. down. What did we drop in? 16. Roger that. So the anchor has just gone down as we've heard and we have a beautiful sunset happening. Look at that. Picture perfect. It is beautiful, dense rainforest on this end of the island. From the sound of chainsaws from about eight o'clock this morning. Obviously it has been logged, but we cannot see any big scars of cleared areas. So hopefully it's being done in a sustainable manner. There's some areas where we can see they've been felled, but they've left, they've left a scattering of trees and everything seems to be rejuvenating nicely. 
over in the port just to our west we could see a couple of uh, the big tugboats with their barges that get loaded with timber and, and uh, towed away for domestic and export. And this morning we had glass out and we had the most magnificent mountain job with rainforest that comes from the top all the way down to our anchorage. It really is gorgeous. And the clouds are starting to drift on through again, so it's going to be a hot old day, we figure. There's no wind. There is no chance of us sailing today. <laughs> We're in 15 and a half metres and we can see to the bottom. We've had schools of fish going round and round the boat. We went to sleep with the chorus of the rainforest, which was gorgeous. But it was so hot, we had to have those fans running last night. So as soon as I turned on the fan above me, I lost that beautiful rainforest out. But it was that or die of a heat stroke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are a sailboat, but not today. We've got just a 16 mile hop across from um, Baba in this beautiful bay around to a uh, little island called Palau, um, Palau Tomahu, that's it. There's uh, a few of the rally boats already around there and they're telling us that it's absolutely idyllic, so we're looking forward to it. We're motoring, as you can see, in total glass out conditions, but this has been a stunning, dead flat, calm, peaceful anchorage where we've recharged a lot of batteries and uh, made a big deposit in the sleep bank. A sleep in and a lovely bacon and egg breakfast this morning. Something you don't see much of in Indonesia. Our bacon supplies are getting a little low, but hopefully they'll last a bit longer. And while we're not sailing and we prefer to be sailors, days like this are pretty cool too. It's actually difficult to pick out the horizon. The blues just merge into each other. Russell is the eternal optimist. The line is going out again. The score so far is in Indonesia is the fish have scored, I think, three lures, 100 metres a line, uh, one board, and the boat has scored zero. Absolutely zip, zilch, nada, nothing. We've enjoyed some great fish meals by going to little restos and buying it. But we have not caught as much as a cold, which is a good thing. We dropped anchor in around 17 metres of very well protected water between the island of Palau Tomaho and the village. Then wasted no time getting ashore to the island for some beach combing and of course a nice refreshing swim. And Karen's already adding to her shell collection. So how much has your uh, shell collection grown by already? Not many. Show me. They're only little. <laughs> Growing some copra in the sun, main product of coconut.
From what we could see passing over the reef in the dinghy, the coral looked quite healthy and we were looking forward to grabbing some lunch then heading back out for some snorkeling. That is, until we checked the WhatsApp message from Raymond, the rally organiser. It appears we had just survived a lovely swim in crocodile infested waters. Although we didn't spy any big lizards while at Conkou, another rally boat arriving a few days later had a large crocodile swim right around their yacht twice shortly after anchoring. Hmm. The age-old tradition of uh, sundowner drinks on the beach, all happening here at Tomahu. The tiny village of Nanali is located on the isolated west coast of Buru, across from Palau Tomahu. It was never on the Sail to Indonesia rally schedule. However, when Indonesian organiser Raymond Lasmana discovered that a number of boats planned to make a stop at the location before sailing on to Wakatobi, with the support of Buru Tourism Ministry, he organised a special welcome event there on just a few days' notice. Despite clearly being a very poor fishing village, the whole community enthusiastically pitched in to put together a lovely program of entertainment for us, including a traditional welcome dance on a dock, lovely performances by young children in beautiful uniforms, political speeches and response from a fleet representative. Um, I just wanted to set a wonderful sail to Indonesia rally from Duribu Duapunisida. Terima kasih banyak. This time delivered in Basra, Indonesian by Emma from the boat Lola B, much to the delight of the big local crowd on hand. We were then treated to an extensive smorgasbord lunch, which these people so generously prepared in our honour. The village has provided a beautiful lunch for us. It contains fish, uh, banana, rice, uh, beans, which are quite hot actually, and then there's palm. So we're really, really privileged to have this lunch provided for us. Thank you. It had us all feeling a little guilty, as it was very obvious that these people had no abundance of wealth or food, but were determined to make sure we were made welcome and well fed. It was a very humbling example of the boundless generosity of these people. We also had the privilege of being special invited guests at the nearby village to witness the Indonesian Independence Day festivities the next day. Local fishermen picked us up from our boats and ferried us to the ceremony. The day involved various elements typical of such celebrations. Speeches, parades by school children, the solemn flag ceremony. The local community always finds creative ways to infuse the Independence Day celebrations with festivities while encasing their own unique culture. Karen, Russell and Tanya have headed off to the Indonesian Independence Day celebrations uh, in the next village just two miles down the coast. Um, Rudy, the English teacher from the village here, uh, he organised two longboats and he's picked up the cruisers that, uh, that wanted to go down and they'll be enjoying the flag waving ceremony and all the marching, dancing and pomp and ceremony. And um, I kind of stayed on the boat because we've been having a, um, a fresh water problem in that the port tank has been blocking and not feeding and water pressure in general is a bit low. So it's a case of uh, pulling the boat apart, making a mess. It's always a drama, you've got to move everything. Under the floor we keep all our spare bits of teak and timber and all sorts of things that come in very, very handy. And I've had that inspection played off and had a look inside the tank and it's all very nice and clean actually. Then it was a case of I had to empty Karen's uh, Tupperware locker to get the floor up and get to the second inspection plate on the uh, port tank. This is where the uh, filler tube goes in. Something had been blocking it 
and once I got in there I found that some old sealant had come adrift and was floating around in the bottom of the tank and I've cleaned all of that out and I'm about to put it all back together. This is the old sealant and stuff that I found floating around in the bottom of the tank and I think it's been getting sucked up against the bottom of the um, of the water intake in that port tank and um, blocking it. So I've blown through all the lines, they're all clear now. I've cleaned all of that out of the tank. So hopefully we won't have a repeat of that problem. And now I can uh, just start putting things back together and then look at whether I'll replace the water pump itself or not. Don't you just love working on boats in beautiful places where I'd rather be having a swim?